This show is brought to you by the This Old Nerd Store, powered by Amazon.com. Buy from the This Old Nerd Store, you get tech, we get a commission. It's win-win. Welcome back to This Old Nerd. I'm Ayaz Akhtar. I am This Old Nerd. You might notice something different right away. Why am I not wearing a black shirt? Well, you know why? Because today is really about sitting on our butts and our hands are hardly going to be dirty because today we're gonna access our home media server but we're gonna use our living room pals set top boxes here we have the WD TV Live Plus over here we have a Roku XDS off screen we have a TiVo Series 3 and what we're gonna do is we're gonna access our home media server we're gonna try to watch what we've ripped or our podcast and all that stuff on one of these boxes in our nice living room Let's open up the WD TV Live Plus. Now right, let's uh, unbox this bad boy. Try to keep up with me, camera person, if you can. Okay, we got a nice little WD Live TV Plus. Let's see, what do we get here? We get some kind of manual, some kind of promotional stuff, technical support and warranty, uh, driver disc, the tiny remote, this little guy, has a lot of ports. So up front where we have like an IR receiver, a power indicator, a USB indicator. But on the back here, on the back it looks like we have a power, USB, HDMI, optical, ethernet, and it looks like breakout points for AV or for component video. Let's see what kind of cables are included. We have RCA cables. I recommend never using these because the quality of video is gonna be just terrible. Component, because you like component. A power supply. And uh, I'm seeing batteries, but you know what I'm not seeing? An HDMI cable. Shame on you. The next time you'll see this thing, you'll see it running. So this is a WD Live TV Plus. It's all hooked up, and you can see it's got a really simple blue interface, but it's pretty. And let's go ahead and see how smooth it runs. You can see the animations are smooth. That's a good thing. I mean, when you're talking interface, you want a really simple interface, something that, you know what? You can actually figure out with the remote this simple. So let's go ahead and set this thing up. Network shares, because we have a network media server. Bender, we go to Bender, as we always do. Oh, the dreaded on-screen keyboard, but this is a necessary evil because we want to keep people off our network. Okay, so we've inputted our username and password. If you've got a Windows share, you probably don't have to do this. And our Mac, we do have this. So we're gonna go ahead and take a look at our video files. And yeah, I hit stop. That's what that error was. That was my mistake. Our stuff's on Drobo. Now, I don't know if you can make a shortcut, and I really hope you can. Now we're at our video folder. Let's go ahead and take a look at this video. Now, we've tried 10 Things I Hate About You on other uh, front ends, and we've had difficulty playing it back with, I think, Media Portal, and only Media Portal, because the video was encoded with Nero. Now let's see how WD Live TV Plus handles things. By the way, this thing says that it basically supports almost every file format you can throw at it, so let's put it to the test. Here's an MP4 encoded by Nero. How does it look? You know what? Video looks like it's in slow-mo. Did I make a mistake? The video is just cruddy. So let's go ahead and move back out of this. Let's go to a DVD. We've always talked about a Bugs Life as our DVD example. Let's go to our Video TS folder. I mean, this thing says Video TS.vob. Maybe this will help us. It looks like if you pick Video TS.vob, that'll give you an option to get to the menu that you want. Let's set this up. Let's watch this in widescreen if we can. Let's see how it's doing. Video playback is very smooth. You can tell this is a compressed video. You can see the compression artifacts on the blades of grass. That's because the quality of this video is low. Don't blame the actual device for showing that because I know the quality of this. Let's see if we can actually zoom in, if it's possible. You can change subtitles, audio channels. So we have found one kind of flaw in this. If you do happen to have a copy of a DVD the way we have here, you can't zoom into the video. That's not necessarily a deal breaker at all. Let's go ahead and test out some even more difficult files, because I know I got them sitting around. Let's try out something pretty harsh. This is a 2.54 gigabyte MKV. Now it's actually playing your preview right there, which is actually kind of nice. If you forgot what the movie was like, you can do that. So actually, can I just start right there? Yeah, you can, look at that, there it goes. That's pretty cool. So MKVs is doing no problem. We have a pan. Now here's the weird thing. On the MKV, we actually have a lot more features to zoom in and zoom out. Now we had a DVD, we couldn't do that, which is unfortunate. But it does show you that if you have an MKV like we have here, you can see for some reason, okay, if you don't want to look at it the way the director intended, we have these bars on the left and right. If you want to stretch it out, you can do that with the zoom feature. Let's go ahead and do that. Not that I would recommend doing something like that. But you see, now we're zooming all the way in. We want to see this guy, and that's enough of that because this is not the right or appropriate video to show people right now. 
Now one of the downsides about this thing, if you look at the remote, there's no way to actually search. There's a search button, and if I hit search, see this little red thing shows up saying, no, you can't do that. Now we have a really long list of movies here. You can see 28 of 336. So if you wanna go find something that's much later on, like X-Men, that's gonna take you a while. You gotta push. So MKVs is doing no problem. Let's try a DivX file. I gotta say, I'm very impressed with how snappy the interface is and actually selecting videos. It's not like, I gotta keep thinking, I'm thinking, I'm rebuilding a database. It's showing you everything you need to know. This is surveillance footage from the movie, this is the way it's supposed to look. And I've looked through the uh, actual user manual and it doesn't appear that you can just go ahead and say, you know what, every time I go to video, like I have to go through this menu, like I have to go through network shares, I have to see all the machines available. Now, by the way, new host eight is our printer. So there's no reason to go to that. So like, it doesn't really know what's going on, it just sees the network as the whole. So let's go around here. So this can be tedious. What does this mean? This isn't bear, this is not a good sign for the partner acceptance rating. However, if you wanna be the one controlling the whole thing, sure this is fine but it's a little iffy, unfortunately. Then again, it's really robust. It's thrown, it's played everything we've thrown at it. So we've thrown MKVs, DVDs, uh, audio files, pictures. It doesn't matter. This thing plays almost anything. I haven't found anything that it doesn't play. You know, I really wanted to like this right out of the box. This is the WD Live TV Plus again. And uh, what bothers me most is that you can't just put a shortcut of, of your network share on the device. Now, why didn't they think of that? Everything else is really thought out in this device, but they didn't include that. Now we contacted our friends at Drobo and guess what? They are hooking us up. We're gonna have a deal for you. Here are the details. If you go to drobostore.com and use the code thisoldnerd, all caps, no spaces, you can save $50 off of a Drobo. If you buy a Drobo FS or a Drobo S, you'll save $100. If you buy the Drobo Pro, you'll save $150. Once again, the code is this old nerd. These codes only work in the US. EU codes are coming soon. Now we're gonna look at the Roku XDS. Now this isn't exactly the same kind of solution that the Western Digital Live TV is because this thing is really more of a media streamer. But since this is the XDS, it has a USB port. So if you wanna attach your flash drive or your hard drive right to this box, it'll access very specific files. Let's see what's in the box. See the good people at Roku? They put my name on this. So let's go ahead and open this guy up. So we got information. This is the uh, graphic of the box. This is not the box itself. It's about the same size. So we've got a nice little remote. We have a little denim thing here, a little piece of cotton. Uh, we have the actual box. So let's show you the box. You can see it looks like um, a box. It's got vent holes on the top so you can actually keep this thing nice and cool. So what do we have on the back? We have component out. We have optical, HDMI, ethernet, RCA. Please don't use this if you don't have to. And here we have the power supply. The Roku XDS is the only model that actually has this port on the side, the USB port, but it only plays a limited selection of video file formats at this time. What else do we have in here? We have RCA cables, we have batteries for our remote, we have here probably the plug. Yeah, but we got a plug. Let's see, what are we missing from here? No ethernet cable, no optical cable, no HDMI cable, but that's okay. Again, we're prepared, but if you're gonna buy these boxes, just be, be aware that you have to provide your own cables. Okay, so you can see we have the Roku XDS and you can see that we've attached an iPod shuffle which we're using as a flash drive. Now the USB on this device right now as of recording, it's November 20th, this is not activated. What does that mean? If you have local content on this drive, you can't access it yet. Now on the Roku site, this is supposed to be activated or this USB port's gonna be activated in December via a firmware upgrade and it's gonna be limited to just simply H.264 video. And as it stands, currently there's no way, even if you have it attached to your network, to access your network media server, which is a big downer right now. And all the confusion, I must have confused the Roku for a network front end. It's not very good at that. That doesn't mean this is a piece of junk. What it really is, the Roku XDS and any Roku is really an over the top solution. If you wanna cut your cable, this is really good. It's a good supplement here. You have Netflix, you got Amazon, Hulu Plus, and if you install certain channels, you can look at twit.tv, you can listen to music. There's a lot of things in here that you can access, including blip.tv, where we host most of our shows, at this old nerd. So if you wanna watch our shows and movies on Crackle, you have all that right here. What we're going to do is a special episode on over-the-top solutions on the Roku XDS specifically, and that's gonna be available at thisoldnerd.com. So go to the site, 
This is not gonna be in the feeds, it's just gonna be on the site. It might be in the feeds in a couple weeks. But if you wanna know about this device and more over the top solutions, go to thisolnerd.com. Now the last thing we're gonna talk about, and I stress talk about, is TiVo. Using TiVo to access your media server is actually pretty easy. You get a piece of software called Pi TiVo. You run that on your media server. I'm actually gonna show you that right now. Now the reason we're gonna be talking about this more than showing you on the TiVo is that if you're not paying the monthly fee on TiVo, you can't access this feature. And as much as I love you guys, I can't spend 20 bucks a month just to show you this for three minutes. That seems a little silly. So uh, let's actually show you how to set up your media server so TiVo can access all the stuff you're sharing. So up here, I don't know if you can see this, this little guy looks like a TiVo. We're gonna hit this, we're gonna show you what it looks like, show and hide configuration. This is Pi TiVo X for Mac. There's also a version for Windows. All you gotta do is share certain directories. You're gonna hit plus and then you're gonna choose the thing to share. In our case, we wanna share video on Drobo and that's right here, we just click video and then you, you click choose folder to share. As you can see, we already have these on the left here. You can see we have video, we have our podcasts and we have a revolving thing, this changes a lot. On the right side, you can see the share name that's gonna appear on the TiVo. Now there's two different ways to access everything on your media server on your TiVo. Now you can stream directly or you can actually download the contents to the TiVo. I suggest the streaming because why would you need to make a copy of it on a TiVo? That seems a little silly. Now, it doesn't really work very well with video TS folders or DVDs, but it almost works with every single video I've thrown at it. I know occasionally it doesn't work with certain M4Vs, but then again, I don't know if you've made your collection of M4Vs. So, what's the suggestion? If you have a lot of MP4s, or you have DivX files, or you have XVID files, PyTiVo takes care of that as it's being sent to the TiVo. That way you can use your TiVo to access all your files. What's really cool about this and why I love this idea if you still have a TiVo is that the interface is really drop dead easy. The TiVo interface has been praised by so many different people because almost anybody can figure out how it works. Plus you hit pause, you got rewind, all the features that you would expect from the TiVo still function even when you're streaming video. Shall we talk about the partner acceptance rating? If your partner is somebody like this guy, very young, you can teach him anything, right? This guy can probably do it via iPad or terminal if you teach them the right thing because they're willing to learn. Brains, brains are like sponges. Branges is what I'm going to call them. Branges. Anyway, if your partner doesn't want to learn anything, the TiVo is probably the best way to go if you're willing to shell out the monthly fee or you pay the lifetime subscription fee. The Western Digital Live TV, again, is kind of like that, kind of like Plex. If you got that engineer kind of girl and she's like, you know what? I'll do it. I know what network okay. shares are. That's pretty good. And it's pretty cheap on top of that. The Roku, very, very cool. Unfortunately, not very good as a network media front end, but it does access the internet stuff. So if, if your media server is just full of podcasts and stuff on Amazon VOD, well, you can access that on the Roku. And don't forget, by the way, if you want a full explanation of the Roku, go check out thisonerd.com. We're gonna have a special video right there about the Roku XDS. I know what you're thinking. You're like, hey, you just scratched the surface of set-top boxes. You only covered three. Don't worry. We're gonna cover more set-top boxes in the future. Odds are, maybe we'll do them as one-shots. So if we get another box in, we'll just do a special on that, and maybe that'll be available on This Old Nerd. Don't forget, you can go to the site and you'll see the thing about the Roku XDS. So that pretty much does it for this episode of This Old Nerd. Next week, we're gonna look at front ends, but this time we're gonna use our video game systems as our front ends. We're gonna look at the Wii, very shortly, we're gonna look at the PS3 and the Xbox 360. And by the way, the 360 turns out pretty awesome. So, I'm Ayaz Zaktar for this old nerd reminding you, ask yourself this question, how's your tech life? It could be better. Wow, this is so much easier, you're a genius. <laughs>